good morning, me hearties, and a very warm welcome to Scotty McClue's morning pop-up. Good morning, McClue number 20. Can you believe it? 20 programs. And of course, we start off this morning by sending all our congratulations to Her Majesty the Queen. So there you are. She's 94 today. Is that not absolutely fabulous? A whole lifetime, 94 years of public service. Happy birthday, ma'am, from all of us here at Good Morning McClure. Lovely to have you with us now. Who have we got this morning? Let me just see. Jack was first on, dinky-doo, Scotty. Gordon Robertson, good morning. You're on time this morning, Gordon, I see. Nikki Graham, dinky-doo. Kevin Stewart's watching, a resident comedian. And uh, also genius. So there you are. The two do go hand in hand, I always suspect. Gordon Robertson, Dinky Doo, Gordon Sterling's watching. Good morning, Gordon Sterling. I know you joined with me in wishing Her Majesty the Queen a very happy 94th birthday. Kareem Zachariah, how lovely to have you with us. Good morning, Kareem. Nikki Graham, Dinky Doo, Scotty, top of the morning to you. It's lovely and sunny here in Glasgow. Absolutely, the weather has improved immensely recently. Have you noticed that? So there you are. So could this be a, a plus of what's happening in the world? God bless Her Majesty, says Gordon Robertson. Absolutely. God save the Queen. Fantastic stuff. A wonderful leader and uh, 94 years of public service. So there we go. <clears throat> I had to deal with a couple of people this morning with me. Chips on the shoulder, you know, a wee bit chippy. Um, out of ignorance, more or less, really. Hello, Scotty McClue. How are we today? Hope you are well. We are very well, Kareem, and it's lovely to have you with us. What a fantastic program it promises to be today. We've had brilliant programs. Can you believe it's number 20, our 20th program? Now, I need to get sharing fairly quickly, guys. So you need to be helping as well with all of that. There we are. So I'll be getting on to um, that page, and then we shall do some sharing. So there we are. Now, how's everybody coping? Happy 20th pop-up, says Jack. I thank you, Jack. Very much appreciated. Good idea. Uh, Thomas Spiden, Longshanks Leonard, Dinky Doo from Finlay Morris. So Finlay, you're waking your team up this morning. Can all of you pop in the name of somebody you want to wake up on Facebook and tell them you're watching Scotty McClue and to get here? Happy birthday, Your Majesty. I thank you, Gordon Sterling. Wonderful, wonderful. <coughs> Good morning, Scotty, says Alistair King. Good morning, Alistair. Fee Fife. How's things in Fife this morning? Great to have you with us. And dinky do. I'm just going to get the sharing done as soon as possible. ASAP. Uh, McLaughlin Jane Leah. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, McLaughlin Jane Leah. Lovely to have you with us. Is it McLaughlin Jane Leah or Jane Leah McLaughlin? Alistair is watching. Stephen Mooney. Miller and Maktoum. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, welcome to Scotty McClue's pop-up for Tuesday. Can you believe it? I love Her Majesty, says Gordon Robertson. I've no doubt she would speak very highly of you as well, Gordon. So there we are. Fair exchanges, no robbery. Long live our noble queen, says Gordon Sterling. Thank you, Gordon. Ali Haining, dinky do. Huey Allen's watching this morning. Good morning, Huey. Lovely to have you with us. Top musician. Larry Donaldson, dinky do. Alistair King. Junior has made me a lovely birthday card. I'm so proud of him thinking of his old dad today. Of course, Alistair, you're a bit young to get your telegram from the Queen, but it's your birthday this morning. It's your real birthday, and it's the Queen's real birthday, so not her official one, and it's your real birthday. Do you have another birthday uh, in June as well? 
Dave Anderson's watching. Welcome, Dave. Lovely to have you with us. Dinky do. What a top man. Finley Morris, Gregor Key. Yes, you get them up, Finley. That's what it's all about. Her Majesty will not be able to go to the bingo in these difficult times. No, I don't know if she does, actually. I've never asked. It's not something you you get up, you know, did you say? Um, and uh, was it House last night? House called. So there we are. <laughs> wonderful. The, the wonderful Susan Forrest. That's just joined us. Welcome. And top man, Kenny Hyde. So there we are, none finer. Lovely Kenny. Kenny, thank you for uh, that wonderful um, car that you were talking about. So there we are. Superb. Two-tone green. And uh, the 2.6, am I right? It was a six-cylinder. This is Rovers we're talking, guys. P4 Rovers. It was a six-cylinder, that one. And, uh, you know, six pots. Popping away there. Oh, you should have heard them ticking over. Wonderful. And the 95, I seem to remember, you can check this up, Kenny, but I seem to remember that Rovers were um, graded in numbers by their speed. So the 75 could do 75. The 80, 80. The 90, the 95 did 95. And uh, the 105 could top the ton. So there you go. Re the Queen, she's old, but she is beautiful. Um, yes, she is. She is, um, well, yes, 94 is old, isn't it? And she is very beautiful. I love the way she spoke at the uh, start of the coronavirus. Fantastic. Very reassuring. Ali Bryson, uh, blood results at 12, Scotty. Ali Bryson, we want to know if you want to share. If you don't, it's your business, but we are here for you. We send you strength. We are sending you love right now. Okay, so we are with you till 12, everybody here, and we're with you always. Okay, the people of the world are with you always. Just shared with my great friend Craig Downey. Thanks, Jack. Good morning, Craig. Come and join us. Sean Goodsall is watching. Dinky do, Sean. Shared Scotty McClure. I'm concerned about the outbreaks of Alabama rot around parks, etc. If dogs catch it, up to 70% sadly die. Like Corona, there's no cure to date. Tell us a little bit more, Kareem, about the Alabama rot. So there we are. I must share, guys. Otherwise, I will forget you distract me, you lot. You keep me back, you see. <laughs> I can't get on with sharing because I'm so busy getting engrossed at what we're all saying. Wonderful. Morning, Scotty. It's my mother's birthday tomorrow. She's also called Elizabeth. She's only 88, though. Kevin Stewart. How fantastic. And uh, Gordon Sterling was mentioning the bingo. Uh, I don't think it's politically correct now, but in the bingo, so I believe, not that I would ever go to the bingo, um, but um, but uh, I believe, or even be a caller, but um, it used to be legs 11, right? And two fat ladies, 88. So there we are. That was, uh, that was a couple of the old bingo calls, but I think... Political correctness will have overtaken that, no doubt. So there we are. Right, what did I just share with there? Come on, guys. Steady the, steady on. Steady the buffs. Anybody know where that came from? The buffs? Steady the buffs? Anybody got an idea there? Just sharing to the big Scotty McClue page. Now, you'll see it coming round on your feed. Have you all clicked like? Remember, Scotty McClue is totally different to all other social media. We work together, not against each other. All right? So we're a big together group. We are all in this together. So I send stuff out. Please share it. If it's to like a page, please like it. Don't go, ah, I don't bother with that. No bothering. You know, don't do any of that nonsense. Right, I'm just going to share, guys, with a big page. Let everybody know that we are live. Right this second. Is this the best time for the pop-ups? Are you all enjoying them at 10 o'clock sharp in the morning? Is that your idea of a good time for a pop-up? Uh, no, thankfully, I only get a year older. 
uh, once a year. So there you are, right, Alistair, we get it. Um, ah, so if the Queen has two birthdays, does that make her a um, hundred and twenty-eight? Have I got that right? So a hundred and eighty plus eight. You have one hundred and eighty-eight. Sorry, what am I? What am I at? Does that make the Queen one hundred and eighty-eight? Effectively, you know, I know that in dog years. My dog is now 96. The wonderful Gordon Roddick is watching. Dinky do, Gordon. Lovely to have you with us and welcome, welcome, welcome. Gordon, I don't know if you picked up on it, but I posted an audition for reading the news on BBC Radio Scotland in 1983. So there you are. And while they were deliberating, I uh, got offered the post at Grampian Television. So that was that. There you are. Um, or I went to gambling television just shortly after that. What do you call a lady addicted to gambling at bingo? Betty. Betty. Got it. Good one. We'll try and give you a wee love there, Kevin, for that one. Everybody gets a wee love. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Susan Forrest. Mwah. Welcome. She sends a kiss from Lancashire. Investigating hypothermic temperatures, says Ali Bryson. Excellent, Ali. Good stuff. Well, share what you want to share. Um, Margaret Sheldon. Margaret's watching from West Midlands. Hi, Noggin, she says, and sends a kiss. We send you a kiss. <sniffs> Margaret Sheldon in the West Midlands. No stranger to Scotty McClure's shows. It's crazy that England are thinking about sending primary school children back to school in June. Why would you risk sending your children back to high risk? You know what I mean? Very strange. They are the future. Uh, and we know that the virus is no respecter of age. So there we go. First they thought young people aren't getting this, and then the young people started to pass away with it. Good morning, Scotty Dinky. Do says Callum McSwan with a C more. Um, what have we got? Today we should remember John Muir, the Scottish born American naturalist who was born this day in 1838. Muir was responsible for the creation of Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. Have I said it right, Sequoia? Um, national Parks in California. The 550-acre Muir Woods National Monument is named after him. Now, I know uh, a Scottish hero. I know all about John Muir, and I shall tell you for why. Because I used to live in East Lothian, and I remember going to look at a house in West Barnes, just outside Dunbar. And um, I went to see this house, and uh, there was the John Muir Park beside. Is that right? In West Barnes is the John Muir Park in West Barnes in East Lothian, just outside Dunbar. Spill. Thank you for that. So we remember John Muir on the Queen's birthday as well. How fantastic. Kareem's got some gen here on Alabama rot. It's a disease that damages blood vessels in the skin and kidney. It causes blood to clot in the vessels, which damages the lining and the delicate tissues of the kidneys. This causes ulcers. On the dog's skin, but sadly it causes kidney failure in the kidneys. There is currently no known cause or cure for the disease. I wonder where it's appeared from, Kareem. How interesting. Thank you for sharing. My goodness, this is an educational program. Um, a very, very, very senior civil servant once said, my goodness, that's Scotty McClure's well-informed. There you go. What about that? And you'll not believe how senior he actually was. There we are. Um, there's a connection with a birthday girl, a certain birthday girl. Um, Kilwinning Rangers, a junior football club. 
says Ali Bryson. Thank you, Ali. A wee shout out for Kilwinning Rangers Junior Football Club. My dad was in the buffs, but never knew what it was. Well, I think a few of us have been in the buff, Margaret, but not known what it was. But um, yes, the buffs, they were a regiment, were they not? And um, the buff was a buff yellow that they wore. I think I have something at the very back recess of my mind that the buffs, uh, you had the light buffs, and I think they were a rifle brigade. So there you are. I think they were crack shots. Uh, somebody can look it up and tell me. <clears throat> the buffs were a regiment, the Royal East Kent Regiment. Yes, they were indeed, Kevin Stewart. You are correct. You have jogged my mind. It's all coming back. There were the Royal East Kent Regiment, and there must have been in battle. I think they were waiting to fire, and the commanding officer must have said, Steady the buffs! So there you are. Just hold it till you see the whites of their eyes. Aaron Foy, good day to you, Scotty. Good day, Aaron Foy. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Do. More sharing, guys. We need to get sharing. So there we are. We need to get sharing. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, who am I sharing? Sharing in uh, public. Share to your story. I'm sharing to my story. Can everybody do the same? Uh, wonderful Kenny Hyde there saying good morning, Scotty. Great show yesterday. Keep up the great work and stay safe. You're a top man, Kenny. Finlay Morris, Thomas Peden has arrived. So there we are. Fantastic. William Cameron. Dinky do, Tam. Scott is celebrating Elizabeth today. Yes, you'll like that. So there we are. Yes, this is the best time for me for the pop-up, Scotty, but probably not my friends, as most of them aren't awake. Well, they're missing out. I mean, they can watch it during the day. James McDonald's watching Dinky Doo. Our first pop-up has now had an audience of 5,700 people. We like that. So it's about 40,000 have seen the pop-ups over the last 20 or so pop-up days. Kareem has posted a link to the Al Alabama Rot. Uh, I'm not a royalist, Scotty, not my cup of tea. Well, Thomas... Make it your cup of tea. If you've been brought up with a wee chip on the shoulder and there's been a certain element of ante, remember the Queen is the Queen of all of us. Every single one of us, regardless of race, creed, background, colour, she is the head of state for four countries and um, she's also... Um, the head of state for four countries, and also the head of the Commonwealth. So, you know, 94 years of public service, fantastic stuff. And she is the curator and the custodian of our symbol of authority in this country. So don't say not my cup of tea. Have a look. You know, I hate nothing. You know, I've only met one bad man in my life, and he uh, took my life savings of me in a business venture. And that's the only really, truly bad person I've met. So there you are. Very interesting. And uh, I was telling somebody this one day and they said, well, you're very, very lucky because there are a few about. So there you go. So come on, get, uh, get stuck in and uh, we'll talk about all of this. It's very interesting. And of course, People think that the Royals cost a fortune to run. They don't. They're virtually self-financing. I think our contribution to the civil list is about 50 or 60p max. You know, that sort of thing. Kevin Roberts, morning, Scotty. Morning, Finley. Lovely to have you with us. Um, Thomas, Peden, dinky do anyway, Tam. Dinky do. Quite right, Finley. Gary Johnston-Smith, lovely to have you with us. Louise Arrows watching, fabulous photographer from uh, Dumbarton, Louise, Helensborough, that way. I see you went with Scotty McClure. So there we are, says Ali. Absolutely, Ali. Dinky do indeed. I'm starving, says Thomas Pidden. Thomas, get a wee something down you, a wee plate of bran or something like that. Kenny Hyde. 
Uh, good morning, Scotty. Great show yesterday. Keep up the great work. Stay safe, he says. I did. I think I've just read that out, Kenny. The sun's out, Scotty. The sun is fantastic. We love it. Kelvin Allen, Brian Hall, Robert Rovers. Uh, let's hope that doesn't mutate, says Ali Bryson. Yes, we don't want that. The Alabama rot. Good morning, dinky do, my good man. Brian Hall, dinky do to you, my good man. Right, guys, more sharing, more sharing. Um, now, what have we got here? Yes. Uh, no, Thomas, uh, that's very, very unfair. I think one photograph taken before things were known. So let's not have this rubbing shoulders nonsense. So there we go. Uh, no, Scotty McClure, steady the buffs is the motto of the co-winning Rangers. Says Ali. <laughs> of course. Silly me. Morning, Scotty. What do you call a man who keeps cats? Douglas. Funnily enough, I when I lived in Yorkshire, my old Labrador, when he saw a cat, he would sort of lunge and uh, I would have to tell him to sit and it would annoy him and uh, that sort of stuff. And then he met his match. Next door had dogs and cats and the cat just wasn't afraid of a dog at all. And the cat arched his back and went, what are you at? Lunging at me? Steady on. And the dog went, <laughs> we touch of their old grey Danoon pottery, very nice. <coughs> Don't worry, but the cough had it for 20 years. Now, uh, good morning, Scotty. How are you? This is Darren James Lamb. Very good. Good morning, lovely blue sky today on the west coast, says the wonderful Louise Arrow. Are you able to get some? Photos out the windy, Louise. Hi from Glen Rothes, says Martin Byrne. Isn't it fabulous, guys? We're all over the world with this program. Tremendous. People watching in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, America. Thomas Beaton says she's not my queen, and it'll not be forced on me. A corrupt family rotten to the core. Uh, no, uh, actually not Thomas Beaton. Her Majesty is absolutely flawless. She's not being forced on you. She is your queen, newsflash, but just you've not been told that. So there you are. Now you have. Fantastic. Um, so there we are. And as for this rubbing shoulders stuff, that's just not true. You know, that's just not the truth at all. Uh, so there we are. Uh, she's not the sovereign, though. The people are. Ali Bryson, I'm sorry to have to correct you, but the people are not. The crown is always sovereign, right? Because that is our ultimate symbol of authority. And what you'll find that, say, for instance, you might be talking about the Scottish Parliament here. The Parliament accepted its papers from Her Majesty the Queen. So she is the ultimate head. The Parliament, the people are sovereign in, but that's not actually a legal thing. It's an agreement. So there you are. But if it came to the law, the Queen is always sovereign. There's a wee bit of news for you, you see. Martin Byrne, not mine, I'm Irish. Even if you're Irish, she um, has the crown of Ireland in her portfolio. So she's very much the queen, although Ireland has chosen to be a republic, but she's now extremely popular in Ireland, and uh, they really loved her visit. So there we are, because she's a super lady. Uh, Scotty McClure, do you think there'll be a Scottish referendum in 2021? People complain about the way the Tory party do things and yet keep voting them back in. Well, Kareem, I don't think you'll find the Scots keep voting the Tory party back in. But we are hidebound by a system, uh, and it's effectively a two-party system, because they've been pretty thin on the ground. Now, Jeremy Corbyn... Um, nearly won the last election, but won. Now, I know nearly never killed the man, as they say, but he nearly won the last election, but won. 
This election, the media went into an absolute frenzy that on no account must a Labour government get in. So because the media barons, the owners, um, their money could have been at stake. They may have had to pay more tax. So there was an absolute frenzy to ensure that not that Labour would ever get in, but that, uh, sorry, not that Labour would get in, but they had to be kept out. Do you see what I mean? So there you are, because the government had to be lobbied, and this is what was behind Brexit as well. Very, very wealthy people were very anxious that the European Union was going to bring out a directive on tax from the 1st of January. So they had to get out. So all the money was put in to making sure that everybody believed that that was the best way ahead. Do you see what's happened? So, but not the case in Scotland. The Scots are a totally different kettle of fish. And I don't think Westminster has ever understood Scotland in the um, many years now, 300, 313 years. Yes, 313 years since the Union. All right, because the union was against what the people of Scotland wanted. But at that point, there was famine. People were dropping down dead in the fields and in the streets. And the nobles had fought each other to the extent they'd all busted each other. That was the thing. Jealousy, envy, jealousy, malice, pride, gluttony. The seven deadly sins. So there we are. Very interesting. So I don't think it's very clear that Scotland did not want a Tory government. Very, very clear. Uh, you know, they made that quite clear at the ballot box. But we're getting run by one. So there we are. But what I would like to see, as I've said before, is that Scotland, which has just been a cash cow to the UK, keeps its own money until it gets on its feet. That would be fair. Uh, the phrase itself originated in 1858. This is the wonderful Kevin Stewart, guys. And we're talking about the phrase, steady the buffs. The phrase itself originated in the 1858 when the adjutant of the buffs was administrating a parade of his own regiment under the gaze of a rival regiment. So there we are. Administrating. Interesting choice there, Kevin. The 21st Fusiliers, right? This is excellent stuff. Not wanting to be embarrassed by an indisciplined parade, he shouted out, steady the buffs, to get his men into order. It became a common phrase in the British Army and was popularized by Kipling. So there we are. Do you know, mentioning Kipling, <clears throat> Rudyard Kipling was a cousin of Stanley Baldwin, right? There's just a wee, by the by, Lord Baldwin of Butley, okay? Stanley Baldwin. And uh, in fact, I'm wondering, was Stanley Baldwin the chancellor of one of the Scottish universities? Something rings a bell in the distant recess of my mind. Check out Lord Baldwin of Beaudley, University Chancellor. Somebody check that for me. And um, anyway, he was uh, Roger Kipling's cousin, but um, the reason I posted an audition I did for um, Radio Scotland, the what was the new Radio Scotland virtually, well, it came in 79, and this was 83. And I auditioned for a news reader's position. And it's very formal, if you hear it, it's very clipped. Now, that was how things were done. Because John Reith from Glasgow, the, the Ouija man, introduced Southern British standard speech to the BBC, so they all sounded the same, uh, including himself, um, received pronunciation. And um, on the committee for pronunciation for the BBC, there was a committee you had George Bernard Shaw, 
who's an Irishman with a soft Irish accent. You had Robert Bridges, the poet, who was the poet laureate at the time. And you had Rudyard Kipling. And they were the ones behind how BBC newsreaders spoke almost until, oh, when did we really chuck that? A few years ago. And now there's not the same pressure. You're getting different accents creeping in to television. So there, but it was a standardized accent. So what about that for you? I can't believe you met a talking cat, Scotty. Oh, Finley Morris. Animals talk. We just need to understand what they're saying. Loved listening to you at Scott FM. Good morning, Scotty. Barry McConaughey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Scott FM was without doubt Scotland's finest radio hour. So there we are. Malcolm McNeil, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, Scotty, I've met the Queen and Prince Charles. Ah, Finlay Morris. Excellent. If you go on to Scotty McClue's website and you click on photos, you'll see me with Prince Charles. Gary MacDonald, Dinky Do, Stephen Menzies. Ali says, the media are so bad in Scotland, wall to wall about the virus, 24 hours a day. There's still stuff slipping through, though. Yes, absolutely. No doubt about it. People are manipulated by social media and analytica. Kevin Roberts, yes, I think what we need to watch is we're all running down to the ballot box to vote in the powers that be. But I suspect there's been a massive shift in power, and a lot of it comes out of Silicon Valley. Yeah, so think about that. Very interesting. Dinky do, Scotty Barth, says Jason McHugh. Jason McHugh, dinky do to you, la. Uh, he made exceedingly good cakes as well. Kevin said, oh, Mr. Kipling, yes. Uh, Kipling has left a legacy with his cakes, says Kevin Roberts. The world's first ever registered football club was the City of Edinburgh Football Club in 1824. It was registered in Dalry in Edinburgh, uh, is Dalry not next to Gorgie, or am I getting my geography mixed up here? But not quite the same place as the current Hearts FC are registered. Could they be the same club? I don't know. Very interesting. I obviously um, broadcast Edinburgh for many, many years, and a lot of the jambos used to come on. And I can remember when Twitter became the thing, and the Jambos were on Twitter, and I was promoting them, and some sort of character behind the scenes at the Jambos Twitter blocked Scotty McClue. Big, big mistake. So if anybody is a Jambo, and if anybody knows the Twitter people at Jambo, Make sure that Scotty McClue is not blocked. There you are. It's very funny. I go on and do such good work for people, and you get the odd idiot that goes, oh, oh, oh no, no, I, 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 no. Just daft. Dafties, there we are. Uh, you beat me to it. Yes, Kevin, absolutely. David Distance watching. Craig Cameron and Steve Wilkie. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty, I'm happy there's more Scotty's radio stations popping up as others are moving down south. Hopefully you will be on one soon and on TV. Yes, I mean, this would be a master show. Friday night, half an hour, half 11 till midnight on commercial television across central Scotland. Could you imagine it? Huge, huge. So there we are. Uh, can you tell us more about the picture behind you? Which one? Uh, the one right behind me or the one there? That one or that one? And I'll tell you about that, Martin. So there we are. Uh, they were both presented to me. Scotty, can you shout out Lanark United Football Club? They'll be joining the sixth tier of the Scottish Football Pyramid. Dinky do, says Finlay Morris. So there you are. Uh, he was Chancellor of Glasgow University 
1928 to 1931. My old alma mater, Stephen Menzies. You great man. I could hug you. Don't panic. But that is brilliant news. That is absolutely outstanding. I just had it in the, the deep, deep recess of the McClure mind. I thought, I'm sure Lord Baldwin of Beaudley was Chancellor of a Scottish University. Uh, so there we are, Stanley Baldwin. Fantastic. But wait a minute. If he was Chancellor of the University 28 to 31, he was the Prime Minister at the time of the abdication. So he was Chancellor of Glasgow University before he became Prime Minister. Is that right, Stephen? Can we just check that? When was he Prime Minister? Peter Connolly's watching. I mean, not that the two are mutually exclusive. Um, you know, I was uh, nominated for the rector of Stirling University one year. Didn't know anything about it till I read it in the papers. It was in the Sunday Post, I believe. And um, the two other people were Ian Banks, the author, and His Royal Highness Prince Edward, the Prince Edward. So there are His Royal Highness, the Prince Edward, Ian Banks, and Scotty McClue. Is that not great? You keep on freezing, Scotty. Well, it's quite chilly this morning, to be honest. And I put the heat off, Leslie. Uh, Stanley Baldwin isn't Earl of Butley. Oliver, second Earl, Arthur, third Earl of Beaudley. Uh, he's not the Earl of Beaudley, sorry. He's Lord Baldwin of Beaudley. Check that one, Margaret, and uh, see what comes up there. Lord Baldwin of Beaudley. Um, and it's uh, B-E-W-D, is it L-E-Y, I think. Uh, just a wee check of that. Scotty, could you play a wee song, please? Scotty, you should do the Scotty story on your YouTube channel. I'd love to see how you went through your career. A man with many strings to his bow. Kevin Roberts, um, it sort of happened. They say you should plan your career. And when people say, tell me about your career, I say, I'll do that when I have one. Um, you know, I haven't scratched the surface. And I've got not a bad CV, but I've never had a job from it. My jobs usually come very often at something like 9, 10 o'clock at night on a mobile phone. Is that you, you old fool? Right, get yourself to Manchester. Go and walk your dog and come down. Can you shout out Craig Minty? He's working hard as a key worker in Butto, in Tesco's in Butto. Dinky do to Craig Minty. I can. David Turner's watching. Stanley Baldwin, first Earl of Butley. So there you are. Ah, good one, Margaret. So he was. I thought you said he wasn't the Earl of Butley. So there we are. Sorry, Scott, he thought he was sitting as an Earl. Ah, right, Lord Baldwin of Butley. No, I think that would just be moved up to the House of Lords, what very often happens with... Um, Retired Prime Ministers, you know, like Lord Wilson of Rivio, when Harold Wilson went in there. Um, but we don't have Lord Blair, and we don't have Lord Brown, and um, have we got Lord Major? Yes, I'll, uh, I need to check. We had Lady Thatcher. Same kind of title as you, Scotty. First Lord of the Internet. Absolutely. Well, I'm the First Lord of the Internet. The Prime Minister's official title is First Lord of the Treasury. So he's in 10 Downing Street. And the Chancellor of the Exchequer, who I would imagine is the Second Lord of the Treasury, is next door in 11 Downing Street. There we are. Very interesting. And... Why does Downing Street have consecutive numbers? I mean, why is, is 10? 10, I think, is the chief whip. Or it was, I'm pretty sure. Hey, no, sorry, not 10. Hey, um, 8, 9, 9, 9 Downing Street. But why does it have consecutive numbers? So why is it not 10 Downing Street and next door would be 12? Was that right? Yes. 
different numbers. So there we are, because 11 should be on the other side. Very interesting. Morning, Scotty. Dinky you do. When's the lockdown going to end? Um, well, I'll give you the lottery numbers first for tonight. And then... <laughs> I don't know is the answer. I wish I did. I know my clue knows everything. Marisol, sorry, Scotty. Thought Baldwin was the first Errol. So they are. Was he not to Margaret? So there we go. Uh, Gordon Robertson, it's happening to me also, says Leslie W. Brown. So there we are. Ah, freezing. Well, I don't think it's coming from here, guys. Everything seems to be fairly good because I'm watching. I'm watching myself. I'm watching myself here. Fantastic. And uh, I'm just going to do a wee thumbs up to Ali there. There you go. Oh, yes. You'll need to tell me which picture it is you're talking about, Ali. Um, it's happening to me also. He was rector of the university. He was PM. Um, so there we are. Ah, he was PM, so he had two. That's right, he had two um, goals at Prime Minister. Same as Churchill. PM 1923 to 24. Three goals. 24 to 29. And 35 to 37. He must have been quite a guy. Because to hold prime ministerial office from 1924, 1923 to 1937. So was he the longest serving prime minister ever? Margaret Thatcher was 11 years in Downing Street. So it seems to me that Stanley Baldwin was the PM for 14 years. Is that right? He must have been the longest serving Prime Minister. Must have been a popular man, Stanley, yes. Because um, he was quite nervous when he went to see the Prince of Wales about the abdication. And Churchill had been a great friend of the Prince of Wales. I don't know that they should have sent Edward VIII away. What do you think? Because he was very very popular. There we go. Very popular. But they were anxious. I'll tell you who was an enemy of his was um, Cosmo Gordon Lang, who he called Ald Lang Sign. Right? An unctuous creep, he called him. Right? Cosmo Gordon Lang was very big on himself. And he was a pal of King George V, King Edward VIII's father. And he was very anxious that the country might modernize suddenly and the monarchy would be into jazz and heavy drinking and nightclubs and dancing and all that sort of thing. So he kind of pushed and poor old George V said, I hope to God nothing comes between Lilibet and the throne. That's our present queen. So there we are. And then her father took over after he abdicated. But I'm just wondering... Should he have been forced out like that just because divorce was frowned on and people didn't care for the fact that Mrs. Simpson had been uh, married twice, I think it was before. So there we are. Um, interesting stuff. Uh, they only have one side of the street, says Kevin Stewart. Aha. So where you see the news now, is the foreigners, the back of the foreign office opposite Downing Street then. You see, I've got a picture of me outside number 11 holding up a pound note. And um, in those days, you could just, Healy was there, Dennis Healy was the chancellor. And in those days, you could just wander up and down Downing Street. It was brilliant. Fantastic. So there you are. Michael Purcell, dinky do, long shanks, Leonard, says Finlay. <laughs> Scotty, when I was at school in Dumbarton Academy, Sir Jackie Stewart came to visit one day, as that was his old school. He shared with us that he's dyslexic and had a terrible time at school, as it wasn't recognised condition back then. Peter Connolly, there were so many conditions that weren't recognised in education at the time. 
And I feel terribly for people who maybe have gone through their life worrying because of dyslexia, because of ADHD, because of um, autism, you know, uh, because of a whole raft and range of conditions that, uh, that just weren't understood. And I would like on behalf of all the people of Scotland to apologize to these people who really struggled in their life. They probably even got belted for not understanding or for being thick or being stupid or for clowning or something like that, you know? I mean, I only got belted for talking and laughing, and as you can see, it's cured me. <laughs> um, Longshank says, can you wish my good friend Thomas Damascus a very happy birthday, please? I can. He shares his birthday with Her Majesty the Queen, 94 today. Why did the golfer change his pants? <laughs> Thank you, Jack. We'll maybe not have that one, actually, to be honest with you. So what I'll do, Jack, I'll take that one out. You need to replace it with another one. Uh, Scotty McClure, what's been the best thing you've ever won or been given? The best thing I've ever won or been given. I won the Duncan McRae Memorial Competition Prize for Scots Speaking at the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. Um, I remember that. And uh, the best thing I've ever been given, I think probably maybe a hand-drawn card by a wee one saying, that's for you. I think that's probably the greatest thing I've ever been given, a hand-drawn card by a wee one, you know? That sort of idea. Fantastic. Paul Francis Carroll's watching. Good morning, dinky-doo. Lovely to have you with us. I tried to Skype, Scotty, but it's offline. Right, let's see if we can sort that right away. Paul Francis Carroll, nobody should ever not be able to Skype if they're on the trusted list. So there we are. It says no internet connection. I don't believe that. Right, I'm going to put this off and on again. Okay, and we'll see if we can get a Skype. That would be great. Paul Francis Carroll, the world's great organist. Sorry, there was a gap between 1929 and 35 when he wasn't PM. Looks like he served as PM for nine years. Right, Stephen, we're getting there. This is fantastic. Guys, can you see the potential of this program? Now, we're relatively small numbers at the moment, but we're fast and strong. And there's information, there's education, there's entertainment, there's a great exchange with the people of the nation from all over the world. And I think this program needs to get out there. We need to find out how on the platform do we get access to everybody? Because everybody should be watching this program. And it's not for me, it's for you. You guys, you're the intelligent ones. You're the interesting ones. This is a great way to spend an hour of lockdown. Fantastic. Uh, Scotty, what do you get hanging from apple trees? Um... Sore arms? <laughs> Sorry if I spoiled that. Is that correct? Have you heard the one about the dislike? No, 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 no. I've got that, Kevin. Don't start that. Sore arms, Johnny. Thank you. A better system now. I remembered when autism wasn't recognized and all the kids just grouped together with no help, with different needs. Absolutely, Kevin Roberts. Uh, Duncan McRae with his wee cock sparrow. Along came a man we are born an ara. I once recited it during one of the Scotty McClue Hogmanay bashes. And a lady uh, phoned and she said that she loved the Duncan McRae recording. And I said, 
that wasn't Duncan, that was me. She said, you've just done that live? I said, yes, I've just done it just now, I just read it. And she said, oh, I thought it was Duncan McCrae. So that was a huge compliment. I'm in the middle of reading Michael Caine's autobiography and how he chose his theatrical name. So there we are, says Stephen. Can I ask how you chose Scotty McClue? Uh, yes, we got together on it. Um, Big John Myers, the late John Myers, sadly, who died last year on the 2nd of June, I think it was. And uh, he was barely 60. It was his birthday last week. Lovely guy. And um, he wanted me to come down and do the phone in. I'd been running a radio station in Scotland. And uh, he wanted me to come down and do the phone in. And I'd taken a gap year at university and um, all sorts of different things and uh, was training as a schoolmaster, all that kind of stuff at the time. And I said I couldn't come down. And then he said, we, like he had a hero who was called Scotty Bucklew. There we are, that was his name. And uh, Bucklew as in the Duke of Bucklew. And he used to, he'd impressed John as a wee boy at the Carlisle Film Club on a Saturday morning. Uncle Scotty used to come out. And he loved Uncle Scotty, so could we could we choose Scotty? And I said, yes, uh, we can choose that, but um, not the Buckloo, because that's the Duke's title, so I will become Mucklu. Okay. There you are, Stephen. Uh, good morning. Hood morning from Greenock. Jackie McEwen, hood morning. Excellent stuff. I think you've been the victim of predictive text. Good morning, Jackie. Lovely to have you with us. Does anyone need an ARC? Noah guy? <laughs> Love it, Jack. Absolutely. Jackie McEwen says, good. Good morning, Jackie. Yes. Scotty McClure again. I'll say, Dinky, do have an excellent day and speak tomorrow. So there are your spot on, Scotty. Jackie told us they used to throw him out the class and tell him he was stupid. Said that's why he challenged all his energy into driving. So in his case, it worked out superbly. Outstanding driver. Um, people used to see him overtaking them on the road in Loch Lomond on a Sunday. Google Ads, multi-broadcasting on various platforms, Scotty. Think that is the way to go, Kevin Roberts. Hi, Scotty boy. Uh, Scotty Bucklew at the ABC Miners in Carlisle. Kevin Stewart, you're 100% correct. There you go. Duncan McCree and the Kidnappers. Brilliant. Kidnapped. Um, the Kidnappers. Happy birthday to the Queen. Did you see him in the first Casino Royale? And um, the guy says... You're the head of the Paris police, but you have a Scottish accent. That surprises me. And Duncan McCray goes, that surprises me too. <laughs> Happy birthday to the Queen, says Jackie McEwen. Absolutely. Scotty, will you please reboot all your devices, including your router tomorrow morning before you come on? I'll do the same with my bits and pieces, because watching this morning has been... Hernan Difficult, there we go. Uh, difficult, freezing, so there we are. Has anybody else had a problem with freezing this morning? It's scary, my six-year-old's the worst nut allergy we found out when she came into contact with nuts. She was rushed to a hospital. Peter, I am so sorry to hear that. Bless her. Brilliant, that's an amazing story behind your names and Stephen. Absolutely. Got to go, Scotty. See you tomorrow morning. I shall see you all tomorrow morning. We have time to play. Jack, you dash off. I'm going to play a song for the people, particularly for uh, my wonderful friend who can't get through on the Skype. And we will reboot everything. Has anybody else had a freezing problem? Do say. Excellent stuff. Right, here we are. Um.
for you guys. There we are. Uh, you should play the national anthem, God Save the Queen, this morning. Perfect short broadcast this morning, Scotty. So it's their equipment. So there we are. Uh, I don't know. Birthday to Her Majesty the Queen. There we are, Gordon Robertson is standing to attention. Yes, and um, great show, Scotty. See you tomorrow, Robert Rovers. Hope everyone is on their feet. Oh, absolutely, the lobby up, Thomas Speeden, the whole lot of them. Happy birthday, ma'am, says Peter Conley. I hope everyone is standing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you're also standing for my nonsense. There you are. Guys, it's been lovely, lovely being with you this morning. I'm going to push off now. Wonderful tributes has gone in. Fabulous, says Susan Forrest. There we are. Oh, no, I'm not just an athlete, you know, guys. I have skills. I'm a black belt in karaoke. All that sort of stuff. Yes, yes, yes. So there we are. I... um was taking gymnastics to help with my anger management. And uh, on the first night, I flipped. A wee berry jeep for you there. So there we go. Excellent stuff. And um, what else have we got? Have we all shared? I shall do one more share. I think that's very, very important, guys. So we're sharing now. Probably good, good, good stuff. Excellent. Right. Uh, bye for now. Off we jolly well go. Stay fabulous, folks. Stay wonderful. Stay safe. Stay home. And I'll sing you the goodbye song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of it all, they know. Revoir and the cheerio. Ta-da, my last. Dinky-doo.